97, 98, I joined another band who was kind of a side band that I was in helping these other dudes called Lazy American Workers. And then uh, Lazy American Workers was like a speed, poppy, power pop, punk, speedy band. It was a ton of fun, man. And then on uh, one of the national tours, we opened for the Dave Brocky Experience. And Dave Brocky's the singer for Guar, one of the creators. And then on one of those tours, they had asked me because the bass player was going to quit. And they're like, well, we know you're a guitar player, but your, your size, your girth, you make the perfect beefcake character. So they're like, what do, you, what do you think about playing bass for us? And I was just like, give me a call. You know, but inside I was just like, fuck, awesome, you know. But because, I mean, and whatever, and I, I, don't, I don't prefer to play bass, but uh, I did, did it for them because it was fucking, it was a cool game, you know. And then I ran a, a Guar 2002, 2003, 4, 5, 6, and the end of 2007, I was wanting to get back playing guitar and get back to like faster, more aggressive metal. Speed metal was, is, is, that's my shit. So I was trying to find guys to jam with at that time. And then that's, uh, that was late 2007. And that's when I walked in to Guitar Center and asked Dave, uh, you know, what would, some, hey, punk dude, what's your agenda, bro? So then, you know, he came in and he knew me as a drummer. He knew that uh, I was into a lot of the stuff that he was into. That's when he was started talking to me about starting a band with him. So we, we already had that kind of discussion before. Um, about me playing with them. And unfortunately, I said no at the time, because I was actually playing with some other guys, and it was the whole, oh, my band's going to be big real soon, we're recording a CD, we're going to do something, I don't want to walk away from that to you know, start a whole other band. So I said, no, thank you, I appreciate it, but I'm not available right now. So, I'm jamming with this bass player named Adam Keeler, and uh, Adam's a fucking really nice dude, awesome dude, and uh, we're trying to find this drummer. So we're asking drummers, we're asking drummers, we're asking drummers, da, 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 came through. But uh, finally it was like the seventh guy that I ended up trying to get in the band. He's the guy that started with us, was uh, Scott McKecker, it was Cracker. And so Cracker comes on board. In the meantime, I run into this other guy named Brian LaForge that I used to jam with way back. And he was actually in Death Toll, in the early stages of Death Toll. Well, he had some run-ins with some substances and different shit, and he said, he was, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of free from all that now, so I'd like to jam with you again. And then, you know, we got all like, uh, what's the word, like, you know, not historical or hysterical. What, what is the word when you, like? Nostalgic? Nostalgic, thank you. We got, you know, nostalgic, started talking about some old shit, and uh, I was like, yeah, we need to jam. So then I talked to Adam, I was like, and Adam was already in like two other bands. So I said, you know, Jam kind of go with another route with this guy instead, and Adam was just like, "Cool, whatever," you know. He wasn't so into the speed metal thing anyway. <clears throat> but uh, so we got Brian, and I had it was me and Brian and Cracker, and we got it together, and then immediately like popped into the studio and did a did our first record it was uh, Black Swamp Rising. About seven years ago, it was actually a friend of uh, mutual friend of ours introduced me and Todd. You know, finally got to. Got to Met, met each other and you know became good friends and you know then he started Mobile Death Camp and I was still in a band called Habitual Coercion and we actually started playing shows together. He uh, he actually approached me when I got this band together. He saw us play and then he was he was like he goes hey you know if if you ever need somebody to go bass to go on tour and stuff let me know and I guess you know. He has. He said later that he's, you know, he could foresee troubles with the current, with the guy, with the original guy we had. And the original bass player, you know, he was a good bass player. He just, you know, he had some issues, you know, drinking issues, things like that, whatever, whatever the case was, and they had a falling out because of, you know, substance abuse. So I get a call one night and. Four o'clock in the morning. And I was like, I was like, yo, I, I need you to play bass for me. You know, this dude is fucking up. Like, we gave him every chance that we could. And it was just to the point where it was just like, it was time to cut him loose. You know, he chose substance over the band. And, you know, 
you got to have your priorities, man. So, and then we did the last couple few shows with that dude. We went home, just cut him loose, put Bo in, and then Bo, like, you know, Bo doesn't drink, doesn't smoke. That's where I'm at. Don't drink, don't smoke, no drugs. So, we can, you know, they got back into town. I, worked, I practiced with those guys for like a week. We practiced in a, uh, somebody's basement for like four or five times. And then we hit the road with them, and then we didn't practice. We just hit the road, and then we were gone. Like, we were gone for a fucking year and a half, basically. Just home for a couple days here, home for a couple days there. We were just out. Three years go by, and you know, Mobile Death Camp does really well, obviously. Everybody's seen them out there playing. On our last tour, Cracker decided that he had had enough, and he wanted to just shut it down. So uh, we were looking for, looking for a drummer, and I went to see this band. It was a friend of mine named Chris Gray. He also works at Guitar Center. And his band is called The Secret Stones, which is a, just a horrible, crappy band name. Which, they all say that to me. And I'm like, our band name sucks. You know, that's a different story. But, uh, so I went out to see Secret Stones. They're fucking amazing bands. And, um, and Chris was like, yeah, there's a guy, guy that I work with. And I want to join with you guys. And I was like, oh, yeah, cool. A friend of mine told me they were looking for drummer and uh, knowing that I made the mistake once I don't want to make the mistake again so I did get a hold of them and said yeah you know, if you're still interested in playing with you I'm still interested in uh, trying to do so I've known Dave for quite a few years and him and I were friends but I hadn't talked to Dave in like a year and the last time I had talked to him I was under the impression that he was moving he was moving to Nashville so when our drummer left the band, we were looking for drummers, and I never thought about Dave because I thought he was in Nashville, you know, or else he'd have been my first choice. And uh, then Todd tells me one day that, hey, do you know this, uh, do you know uh, Dave Martin? I'm like, yeah, I know Dave Martin. It's like, well, he wants to audition, or, you know, whatever the case ended up being. I'm like, I thought he was gone. I'm like, oh yeah, we'll definitely have Dave come out. You know? So that was pretty much it. And now he's sitting in the other room because he recorded the record with us, so he's in a band.